Last weekend, the reinstated Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Shaibu, was on our morning show where he gave his uh, account of what happened at the Benin Airport on Thursday. Shaibu also stated that he has not received the stay of execution from the Edo State Government. He has since defected to the All Progressives Congress, the APC. As at today, Edo State seems to be the only state in Nigeria with two deputy governors ahead of the governorship election in September this year. Meanwhile, the Edo State chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has called for the immediate sack of the Commissioner of Police in the state, Funsho Adeboye, for failing to curtail the attack. The party says it has forwarded a petition to the Inspector General of Police detailing the events that played out and the alleged complicity of the state police commissioner. Joining us now to review the political and legal battles in Edo State ahead of the governorship elections in September is Liberos Oshoma, an indigen of Edo State and a lawyer and human rights activist. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Doctor. Happy birthday. Good morning, Rufai. Yeah, in advance or in advance? Uh, in a, no, it's in tomorrow. No, it's tomorrow. Oh, God. You know, you know that. Yeah, yes, I know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Anyway, what is happening in your state? We had uh, uh, the deputy governor, coach, uh, you know, Shaibu, on this program. And he told us that uh, he was going to the office that uh, he has been reinstated by the court of uh, just, uh, Justice James Omotosho. And we asked him, look, can you really go to the uh, office? Well, he also told us that uh, his uh, spirit is in PDP, but that he has left, the spirit has left. <laughs> Within 24 hours, we saw him joining uh, the uh, All Progressives uh, Congress and kneeling down uh, before a man who used to be his godfather, that he turned against, all within uh, a short space of, uh, is it less than four years, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, you are from Edo State. So, uh, what's the state of play Yo, the in question, that state, politically? The question, the question I asked them yesterday was, um, is it a case of um, a, a twin chasing his brother into the arm of their disowned godfather or father? or a case of a recalcitrant son coming back home. If you, if you look at it, you can, depend on the side you look at it from. Um, also, we have all consistently argued and stated clearly that there is no divorce or divide between these political parties. They are, they are vehicles for contesting for election. It's all the same set of people. People that, you know, today, uh, in APC, we are once the, uh, those that uh, formed the PDP that said PDP is home and that they will never leave. And they left. And only for them to go back later, they'll say they are returning home. I remember the same Philip when he went to PDP, he said it is back, it is good to be home. That he was, this was where they started from. So even the moment this problem started, I knew that this would happen. Even when Oshomole came out to say, APC is not a home for um, rejected uh, people and that as a governor, his deputy governor did not take him to court and in all of that. But we saw Philip kneeling down and he was welcomed back home. Now he's, uh, you know, when you leave a political party in Nigeria, they are, the party you are leaving will say you are, you are, you are not, uh, you are immaterial. You are now a Lilliputian. But the one that is receiving you, would say, yes, a, 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 a Goliath has come home. So we see these things happen. But the, the issue for me here is um, the fact that the law, if you look at Section 188, before now, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court also had interpreted subsection 10 of Section 188. And the last time we were here, uh, he and I, uh, we talked about sec subsection 11 of section 188. The court also now, and then the conclusion then was that even though the constitution talks about gross misconduct, it left the definition of gross misconduct in the hands of the assembly. But now the court also had gone further to define what gross misconduct is, to say the actions the, that gave rise to this impeachment are not things you can term as gross misconduct. 
that's another, that's a, one area I am very happy about. I even though, you know, in some other cases, the court had made a pronouncement copiously, but it has not been this sound that um, uh, you, impeachment had been nullified on the ground of non-service mm. of uh, proceedings. But this one, the court stated categorically that by virtue of, subs even though subsection level of section 188, put the definition of gross misconduct in the poor view of the status of assembly, but also that the court has the power to define clearly what misconduct or, or to look at what amounts to gross misconduct. So it is in that regard that the um, impeachment was nullified by Joseph Motoshaw. Also, now there's the issue of whether there was um, a stay of execution or no yeah. stay of execution. It is a notorious fact, and the doc can bear me witness here, that an appeal in itself, except in election petition matters, yeah. once I, I, an appeal is filed in election petition matters because it is sweet generis and because of the time frame, you're asked to maintain status quo. But in other matters such as this, so other civil matters, an appeal in itself, even an application for stay does not amount to a stay. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be subject to abuse because yeah. the thing that the court, the issues that the court will look at is even the application, even the appeal, yeah. Are there agreeable ground on the appeal? Yeah. Are there exceptional circumstances to warrant a stay of execution? So the fact that a party has filed a stay of execution on its own does not amount to a stay. We have seen cases where the court refused to grant stay of execution pending appeal. And, uh -huh. you know, says, oh, look, this does not stop me. You can go on appeal, but it doesn't even stop me from going on. But unlike this matter, uh, the court had um, decided, and then also, can a declaratory judgment be stayed? Mm. A lot of lawyers also miss mm. that point. A yeah. declaratory judgment cannot be stayed. Yeah. It is also a notorious fact. You can apply for, for a restraint, um, um, an injunction pending appeal, yeah. not to stay a declaratory judgment because it is not an executory judgment. It's declaratory. You, mm. Do you stay, we, we say stay of execution. Yeah. You can't because an executory is to execute. Yeah. So a declaratory, you can't say you are staying execution of a declaration. Right, thank you so these are, these are the issues. Because, you know, there was that conversation when he was here on Friday as to whether or not it was a motion of no on notice. And then the Edo State government had brought out their, their paper to say, oh, there's a state of execution. So really important that you clarify that. But now, in, in my introduction, I talked about there being a peculiar or unique situation where we have two deputy governors. Because as we speak, uh, Mr. Philip Shaibu has appointed his aides and he has gotten himself a um, chief of staff. Whilst the Edo State government is insistent that Mr. Mobile Marvelous he, he is the deputy governor of Edo State. How, how, how would they work that out? <laughs> and then the second part of it is that we now have a situation where the governor it belongs to PDP and the deputy governor is now an APC card carry member. How, how do we work out that dynamics? I remember Dr. Batsi asking him the other time that, what is the point of going back to work in a place where you, you are cannot, not wanted. yes, you are not wanted or you cannot work with your principal. How will that, so can you run an independent government? I, I mean, you, please you see, that. this uh, played out between Obasanjo and Atiku, if you remember. Mm. Atiku was in ACN, Obasanjo was in PDP and there was an attempt to impeach him and even stop him from, you know, contesting in that election. So those ones, but you see these politicians, it's an ego thing for them. And then also, even if, if you say it's about, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, compensation or pension, he's run four years. So by that four years, he was in the office for four years. So that already entitled him to whatever benefit the office of a deputy governor would get uh, outside of office. But what I see playing out here is high-level politics, high-wire politics that if care is not taken, they might use to flip. You know, you, I can't, you can't take anything past this politician. Let me paint a scenario. Now they are calling for the removal of the uh, police commissioner. Yeah. As if the police way. commissioner is the problem. They both created the problem. You had problems on both, both sides are violent. And now they are calling for the removal of the police commissioner. You have the House of Assembly there on one side. Mm -hmm. Don't also undermine the uh, influence those people with. If you put Philip Shaibu as deputy governor and say the court has reinstated him, he's the deputy governor, and then 
a House of Assembly comes up, the same process, the same procedure tomorrow, and say we serve a notice of impeachment on Mr. Governor, and boom, in two days, they tell you that we have impeached the governor. Who becomes the, the, the governor, acting, acting governor? governor. It is uh, the man who was the deputy governor. And so, so and then the next the thing... So deputy governor of those things? No, I'm, I'm, I will get to that. And then the next thing you will hear is go to court. We've heard that a lot here. Go to court. You have, and quickly, the police will be withdrawn and you'll be left, you know, you'll be abandoned. The court had made a pronouncement, and I, that's why I took my time first and foremost to define whether an application for stay. Yeah. That application has not been heard. The court had not granted a stay of execution. So as we speak, legally speaking, today, Shabu is the deputy governor. governor. But can he function without, from his house? Uh, uh, from his house? <laughs> the answer is no. We know he can't. Even while he was there, before he, is, he was impeached, we know how he was even sent packing outside of the government house because... And we also concluded last time that we need a clear court definition for uh, or, uh, uh, functions for the office of the deputy governor, not to act as an appendage to the governor. And so what I see playing out here is high-wired politics. And you have government, the government at the center is APC, the one at the state is PDP. And how well they are able to, you know, match each other. It not Now they no longer resort to... Um, uh, uh, what do you call it, wit or knowledge. It's about violence because election is around the corner. You remember River State of those days? Yeah. It was about um, Umbu. The people that called for Umbu sack, when they eventually got to government at the center, they did worse than what they, they said Umbu did. So it's all, it's all politics for me and mm -hmm. um, not, not really about, um, Sorry, five, about the functions of the office or whether he can function. Just on a side, so, so is Mr. Marvelous going to be collecting salary as, alongside, um, even though Mr. Shaibu said he hasn't collected salary in one because year? Because of the provisions of the constitution that gives the governor so much power, he can do and undo, whether constitutionally or otherwise. So, but here, the governor has said, this man is the deputy governor. I've appointed him. We have applied for a stay. Whether court grant the stay or not, the man remains a governor, a deputy governor, and he'll be drawing salary. Who will stop him? From drawing salary. Maybe when he leaves office, if his party does not win, they now begin to probe and ask that man, return all the money that you have been paid, you know, because you were never a deputy governor, you know, ab initial. But for now, as we speak, mm. nobody will stop the governor. The House of Assembly is almost an appendage. But in the uh, eyes of the law, Marvelous was never deputy governor. In the eyes of the law, Marvelous was never deputy so, governor. And, but you can the, presume and, uh, that pending when the matter was decided, that he was appointed as deputy governor. No, but as, as we speak today. No, as we speak. Never no. deputy governor. No. And that's why Philip Schreiber has even gone ahead, employed new aides, put the letter across, and also he says he's been running the seat of deputy governor for over a year, that the governor had not paid him, that the governor has a backlog of salaries to pay him, that he's also going to draw that, you know, with the courts. So please, I want you to explain all of this debacle. In all of this, what is the role, I will ask, of the Edo people, people like you? <laughs> because all of a sudden, it has now become a free-for-all, where they are shooting on airport road, there are narratives, and there are pure blatant lies, like we are hearing, we are beginning to hear people skew the narrative. That's how some people claim that the notice of stay of execution was stay of execution granted itself. And we had a big kofufu here. What are the Edo people, the stakeholders, speaking? You know, what are they saying? You, you, you see, first and foremost, this is not about Edo people. Um, until we demonetize politics in Nigeria, we'll continue to have this, this um, situation and scenario where people will kill you to serve you. Um, the same Philip Shaibu that we're talking about today, when he was with Obaseki, you remember the crisis between them and Oshomole? Same at the airport, where some persons went to the airport and guns were fired, and then um, Oshomole was almost declared persona non grata in Edo State, because all because of politics. Philip Shebu was on the other side. Mm. And so today, he's at loggerhead with his uh, once um, twin brother. And we are still seeing the same process, the same gunfire, when you ask, 
where is the Edo people in all of this? Is it not the same some Edo persons that are being used to fire shots? Mm -hmm. Is it not supporters on one end and supporters on the other end that are fighting each other? These people attend weddings and ceremony of their relatives and their children and they know where they meet. But the Edo people are the ones they are using as foot soldiers, as pawns. And because of the lucrative nature of our politics here, they will set aside peanuts. Remember in the last election, Philip Shaibu was appointed, was almost selling uh, SSA. If you want, come and apply and get the same method they are using today. So none of them is a cent. Mm. None of them is a cent. And the Edo people also do not. They, and you see, every election in Nigeria, we say, oh, the, the, this post should be zoned to this area. This should go to this area. You ask yourself, Obasanjo's presidency, what good did it do to other people? Gulag Jonathan's uh, uh, presidency, of what good was it to the average Otoke man, apart from a few persons who benefited? Yaradua's presidency didn't take away bandits from uh, Kasina. Uh, Dito um, Buhari's uh, uh, presidency. And today, is Tinubu's presidency as he removed hunger from the south southwest. So when these people, you know, bandit these things, it is not because they want the average Edo person to benefit. Go to Edo State as I speak now. The roads are bad. I just came back from Benin. The roads are... And then you talk to some people, they'll say, oh, Baseki... Never seen a governor as good as this man. He renovated sectariat. And you ask yourself, is this all there is about governance to these people? And tomorrow, this same man will travel abroad, will go and enjoy. It's light headache. He will travel just the same way Akbabio built a, 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 a biggest hospital in Uyo, but that hospital could not treat him when he had a minor accident uh, in Abuja. Yeah. So these are, it's not about the do people, and the do people also, it's not to them. How do we collect from these people? How do we get our own? And the little, those that can get SSA, it is okay for them. They all promise industries. At the end of the day, nothing is built. So the narrative, no matter how much you try to change the narrative to engage the ordinary people, they will still wait on that day to be paid. Imagine taking you, Rufai, now. Go to the street and, sorry, doctor, quickly. Go to the street and say you want to interview or discuss with people in Edo on how they feel. The next thing they will ask you, how much you bring off us. Now when we don't talk to you, what are you paying? Yes. You know, so these are the challenges really, and not about the people. And I like the fact that we continue to talk about this thing and deepen the conversation and hope that the people will learn. Otherwise, we won't be talking about, uh, you have somebody like, you have the, the three candidates ordinarily. You look at the three candidates, you say two, seasoned lawyer, one, a politician. And but then they will tell you it's about the people. Who are these people? The people that are bought with votes. People that don't even know they are left from. Them. That's why debates in these climes don't win elections. Yeah. When you ask them to come and debate, they'll tell you, you know, debate don't win elections. They'll tell you, those of you that are talking on TV, you can continue to talk. The ordinary people that you are trying to liberate will be the one that will turn against you. Yeah. So it's not about those people. Okay. Just two I get your explanation about the judgment being declaratory. But can the uh, Edo State government, can they go to the Court of Appeal to prevent the kind of situation that you predicted that Omobai or Godwin could find himself in a situation where he will be asked to refund the money that he's uh, collecting? That's one. Number two, um, Philip Shaibu says he has appointed a chief of staff and seven assistants uh, who have been dismissed as fake by the state government. Now, is it possible in that, inside that constitution for a deputy governor to run a parallel government? I thought that the standard practice is that if you are you know, deputy governor, you will recommend to your boss that you want to make these appointments, and he will approve. Uh, or, uh, does a deputy governor make appointments on his own? Yeah, this, let me start from the last one. The dep we all know, even, even a, a spokesperson to the deputy governor is um, addressed as deputy spokesperson to the governor. Yeah. Because the governor appoints him and then second him to the uh, uh, deputy governor. So all of these aides are appointed, nominated by the deputy governor to his boss, and they, the governor will appoint. So, but in this case, that's why the governor can withdraw aides from a deputy governor. And that's why I was saying, 
let there be clearly defined role and powers for the deputy governor. So all of these appointments really, uh, for me, uh, uh, cannot be sustained by him because you have nominated them, they, but this approval will still come from your governor. And that's why people are saying, why go to a place where you can't function? So you're appointing aides that have no, no, no nomenclature. You just give them nomenclature, but the governor has not, you know, appointed them because he has the appointing authority. Yes, the Edo State, governor, Edo State government can appeal. They can go to, to Court of Appeal to say, look, they, like I talked about um, the uh, what do you call it, presumption of regularity, that as at the time this man was appointed, the presumption was that the process of impeachment was okay. Because also, the court had gone ahead to ask the, the state to pay Philip Shaibu all the backlog of his, just some other show made that pronouncement, all the backlog of his salaries and allowances. So he's entitled to that. But the court also, the state has the powers to go to the court of appeal to appeal, to ask for set, set, uh, even duration in the effect, in the, in the, on the uh, ground that the uh, uh, court disagrees with their grounds of appeal. But for me, the issues here is if it's about the people, really, if it's about people, political office holders will put their personal interest aside. All of these issues, I, would, I, I don't see the need for you have impeached the deputy governor and the court has said, these allegations that you have levied, in my opinion, are not what should be termed gross misconduct by virtue of section 188, subsection 11. And so you say you are appealing. Appealing what? So, but I would have expected both parties to put their interest aside for the benefits of the people that elected them, quote and unquote. But it's not about the people. It's about personal interest, it's about ego. And then tomorrow, don't be shocked, that tomorrow you see one kneeling down for the other and say, forgive me, you, you know? So, it has happened, it has happened with, uh, with Shomole. Um, we see it play out always. So, uh, by virtue of this constitution, they have the power, they have the right to appeal and ask that uh, Obamaya be recognized for the duration, the time, before the judgment was delivered. Because by virtue of presumption of regularity, it is presumed that that, of that pro, uh, act was regular until the court you know, nullified it. But the problem there is that the court has said right from April, the presumption is that this man was never impeached because the action that you carried out was illegal because you cannot term this action. So pay him back his money. If you're going to pay him, where are you going to take it from? Yeah. You will need to take it from the person you have illegally given it to. to but here we know that these things are not rebounds. That's why we spend money, you know, we spend money that are not budgeted. Very quickly, how do you think this would affect APC's, um, I mean, sorry, the PDP's chances at the other elections? Because we have only a few more weeks to go. Do you think that with these issues that are going on, APC, PDP, that the Labour Party would gain an inroad? Or uh, would the, even though you have said that there are no people, at the end of the day, it's who's coming with what they can gain. How do you think this would affect PDP's chances? You, for me, Labour Party should take this because we see strong fights between the, the two. Uh, um, to them, they feel they are the giant. And so, Labour Party should play the underdog and use this to do house-to-house -house campaign. But the problem is, there are no people. They will tell you, no, it's no longer the turn of the Bini man. It's now the turn of the Isha. Oh, Akpata is good, but if he, because he's from the same place as Obaseki. So that's, you know, a very big problem that the Labour Party, how do the Labour Party need to cross? And then lastly, quickly, the PDP also need to watch it closely because they're indirectly inviting the military into this election. With the way they have the election to lose, with the way they are playing, they are indirectly playing into the hands of the APC. And tomorrow, now they've written a petition against the deputy yeah. commissioner. Tomorrow they'll say because there was violence, bring in the military. Mm. And we know what happens thereafter. Mm. Mm. All right, thank you very much, Libra Sushoman. Again, happy birthday for tomorrow. Uh, you, you know the tradition. You're now a member of the yes, house. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. <laughs>